How's it going, everybody? Iowa Prep Sports Pickums Week 4 edition is here. Jeff Johnson along with KJ Pilcher. Hello. Jeff Linder down there on the end. Uh, we're going to take 10 prep football games for t- from tomorrow night. We're taking this on Thursday <coughs> and uh, give you our expert analysis and picks. Guys, I can't believe it. Week 4. I mean, we're almost halfway through this puppy. Huh? Yeah. Fastest nine weeks of the year. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um... Anything stick out before we jump in here to week four? Anything from week three that, that's stuck out to, to either one of you guys? First weather delay. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yep, Thursday night, right? Yep, and, we're and cruising. Jefferson. We've done so well. And then that happened. I didn't but miss it that we much. survived. Yeah. We Lindy, survived. anything? Uh, Limbaugh won that game, by the way. Uh, so a nice win for the Lions. Yep. Lindy, anything from, from week four? Three that, that really kind of stuck out to you. Well, I saw Xavier on Friday on Thursday. Um, still really good. Uh, they survived a game in which they had three turnovers in a quarter. Still didn't give up a point. Still didn't allow assumption inside the forty. Wow. Uh, you know, they're they doing look, their job. They're they're doing their job. And uh, uh, I saw Center Point and Benton and. Um, you know, Benton's got an explosive team. Uh, Center Point's got a pretty decent team. So, um, you know, we're a week away from getting district football started. We talked about uh, a lot of crossover, Central Iowa versus Eastern Iowa when it came to 4A last week. And you kind of look at the scores, uh, you know, how would you kind of analyze what happened? Central Iowa was a little bit better, yeah. I'd say, overall. I don't have the exact copy. Uh, did anybody other than City High win? Cedar Falls beat Ankeny by point. Okay. So those two, I think, are the only. Yeah, uh, so I think those are the only, only other two. Um, Prairie was beaten soundly by mm-hmm. Waukee. Dowling came over here and and uh, doubled up Cedar Rapids Kennedy with a good fourth Valley. quarter. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah, Valley. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, the one that kind of surprised. I got to look. I know it was fairly close. Uh, early, I guess. Ankeny Centennial did pull away. Uh, Late, but uh, under, from my understanding, of where the West played, they can be Centennial close for a little while and stuff. It ended West up first being loss, they, they must be all right. 21 13 yeah. uh, to Ankeny Centennial, which is a team that you know I've had ranked high for most of the season. Mm-hmm. And I hope that uh, you know the the Eastern and Central Iowa teams continue to do this. I think it's it's, it's great, I think it's best, it's good for both. Both areas, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Uh, you know, you Lindmark's know. got Urbandale this week. And uh, I know this is the end of the cycle. Um, so next year, you know, everything can change. But, uh, yeah, I think it's been good. Mm-hmm. I think it kind of shows maybe who's a little bit better and, and who's not and around the state and, and things like that. So let's jump right into 4A for uh, our games this week. We have uh, a battle of top five teams, number two, Bettendorf, uh, at number five, Cedar Falls. Uh, both teams are three and zero. Bettendorf defeated Dubuque Hempstead last week handily, forty nine to seven. Cedar Falls got past six ranked Ankeny, twenty eight to twenty seven. Always tough to beat the Tigers at the Dome, boys. Uh, can Bettendorf do it? Uh, that's at Bettendorf, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is it at Bettendorf? I think okay. so. Sorry about that. Yeah, it is at Bettendorf. I apologize. So. Um. Sorry. I think that's going to be a really physical, uh, really defensive game, uh, probably pretty ground-oriented. I um, think it's going to come down to, you know, down to the last few minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Cedar Falls. Uh, Harrison Bay Bowie for Vet North, the, the transfer from Moline, is mm-hmm. that accurate? <coughs> he has 600 yards in the first uh, first three games for, for – um, Bet North, so obviously that's where Cedar nice Falls. Nice addition, has to start. yeah. Very nice addition, and uh, Cedar Falls actually got out game last week by by Ankeny. Uh, when you look at the overall yardage, so uh, yeah, I, Lindy, I'm with you. I just they are always so hard to beat. The Tigers are uh, in that dome for whatever reason, but this is going to be a Donnie Brook. I'm also going with Cedar Falls, uh, though. You know, really is to me, it's kind of a coin flip game, and it should be a great one. Bill, what do you got? Uh, first up, Bendorf uh, overall leads 4A with 967 yards rushing, 13 touchdowns on the ground. That's going to be 
that's what they're going to have to do to, to win this game. Um, but defensively, you know, they've given up uh, 689 yards overall through the first three weeks. Cedar Falls has been fairly balanced. Kale uh, Loker, I think I kind of butcher his name a little bit, uh, but, uh, you know, he's thrown for 445 yards and five TDs. Uh, he's got a nice combo with Ben Sernet, uh 16 catches, 234 yards, and three of those touchdowns. Uh, Trey Campbell, five for 83, and, and the other two. Um, but they've also had some decent performances from the run run game. I think it's going to need – Cedar Falls is going to have to be balanced. Bettendorf is going to have to rely, you know, just chew up a lot of clock and – kind of try to run the ball down Cedar Falls' throat, which is easier said than done. But uh, my my man Parker Leibold's back uh, oh, week sure. four a ringer. after his perfect uh, performance in week two. And Parker and I agree on Cedar Falls. So we're going with the Tigers there and, and agree with you guys. It's going to be a, a slugfest. We might as well just stop the podcast <coughs> because we know that with Parker around, he's you know, they're going to be ten and zero again this week, Wendy. So we're we're, we're doomed. Uh, no, go ahead. <laughs> we're doomed. We're doomed. We are doomed. Uh, let's head back into town here uh, on the west side, far west side to be specific, for our next game. Cedar Rapids Prairie hosts seventh ranked Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Both teams are two and one and coming off a loss, as we mentioned a little earlier. Kennedy lost to top ranked West Des Moines Valley twenty eight to fourteen. Prairie was beaten soundly by Waukee forty three to seven. Uh, you know, this is a battle, boys, of, uh, you know, which team comes back from a loss maybe mm-hmm. a little bit better, and, um, both disappointing losses. Yeah. Which sure. one's easy, you know, you played, which one's easier to come back from, uh, you know, getting, uh, your tails thumped or losing kind of a heartbreaker like Kennedy did? Boy, I'm not sure if we ever lost a close one. <laughs> I think, <laughs> seriously, because the teams that we played, uh, like back in '92, like Jefferson and Lindmar, and uh, well, I guess we were fairly close with Kennedy that year, but um, the other ones weren't really uh, close on the scoreboard. So um, I'm not sure. That's a good, that's that's a good question. That's mm-hmm. kind of hard because both have their own. Uh, uh, they're both both kind of they're just different. Right. Um, I think for Kennedy, it's going to be. A little bit easier to bounce back from, considering, you know, who they played. Right. A lot of some people think Valley's the best team in the entire state, uh, and the way Kennedy played, you know, even Gary Swenson said for for over two and a half quarters, uh, they kicked our our butts around, mm-hmm. uh, that they're beating us up. Um, I was really impressed with the way Kennedy's defense, their intensity, and I mean they were going full throttle for the majority of the game, and I just kept thinking they can't keep this up. They're going to fade or fold. Mm -hmm. Some mistakes loomed large. You know, they had a a snap on fourth down in Valley Territory go over uh, the quarterback's head, and Valley recovered. Uh, Then a big play uh, for a touchdown. And then the next series, the first snap, they only had ten guys out on the field. They throw somebody out there running back. He gets the ball and fumbles right away. Valley... uh, gets the ball deep in Kennedy territory, turns that into points, and that kind of was the, the teeter, the fulcrum of the game a little bit. Great work. Uh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think it's easier for Kennedy to bounce back, and, and they're going to have to rely on that defense. 28 tackles for losses and 17 sacks so far. And just looking at what Waukee did against Prairie, uh, they had about 10 tackles for loss and two sacks. So, uh, this is a, a stunting defense for Kennedy that's going to put a lot of pressure, whether it's a run blitz or a, or a passing blitz, to put pressure on the quarterback. Prairie's run 73% of the time, so they're going to have to learn to throw over the top uh, and, and break a couple plays against the secondary that's proved it can it can man up. Um, but Parker and I uh, are going with Kennedy. I am as well. It was interesting. Uh, Waukee ran for... Over 300 yards, I believe, against Prairie. And we all know that, that that's what Kennedy does. Uh, still haven't really found a consistent passing game. So uh, I just think Kennedy's better right now. Uh, 
I think I, I think Kennedy proved that certainly it's it's a dome contender um, <laughs> to get to the Final Four, and uh, I, I think the Cougars will rebound here against Prairie, uh, which might have a little bit more to prove right now than uh, than the Cougars do. Jeff, you on? Yeah, I'm on the I'm on the Cougar bandwagon this week too. You're on the Cougar bandwagon. Uh, they need to get the ball to Kieran Hedring a little bit more. Uh, 441 yards, 9.2 yards per carry, and seven TDs. Uh, I, I think they showed against Valley exactly what he could do. All right, let's stay in town, uh, Kingston Stadium, to be specific for our next game. Cedar Rapids Jefferson against Cedar Rapids Washington, the old rivalry. Jefferson 1 and 2, Washington 0 and 3. Jeff lost last week uh, on the weather delayed aforementioned game there to Lenmar 14 6. Washington lost to Dubuque Senior 28 to 7. It's been a while since Jayhawks have beaten the Warriors. And KJ, you you s- sniffed out all that specifics, so why don't you uh, regale us with your information? Here? Uh, Linda was up on it too. Last time Jefferson won in this series was 2001. Uh, Jim Womichel's first year, uh, that was the end of a three-year stretch where Jefferson had, had won from 99 to 2001. Uh, Washington leads the series 43-19-2. and two. Uh, Guess what year the series started? Not looking. Not looking. Uh, 1850. <laughs> it probably feels like it to some. 1950? Boy, I'm not even sure. 1959. 1957. 57. Pretty Jefferson's cool. head coach was George Hittiger mm-hmm. and Bill Barnard for the Warriors. And, of course, they had two well-known assistants in the metro area where Bob Ask was the assistant, Jeff, actually the line coach, I believe. And then Orville Rust and Bud Rainbow were assistants for Barnard. So uh, a little history there in I think this is a 65th, 65th or 66th uh, edition of the rivalry. Jefferson was a little bit beat up uh, at the end of the Lindmar game. Yes, very much so. Um, Washington, their struggles continue. Um, so I, I really think this is a coin flip, and I think the Jayhawks still have a good shot of winning their first one in the series since, you know, Y2K was still fresh in everybody's <laughs> mind. And uh, Parker, this hurts me. Parker, this really hurts me to say, but we're going with Jefferson in this one. Lindy, best in the West. Uh, Jefferson as well. I just think uh, I think it's time, and uh, that they snap this uh, not so little streak. And I think it's. I think right now they're the better team. I wonder. Uh, Who's going to be able to play for the Jayhawks? That was a very, very physical football game against Lindmar. It seemed like every other play, unfortunately, we were having a delay while somebody was being tended to on the field, mm-hmm. KJ. And uh, mm-hmm. the Jayhawks mustered between, I think, between only 50 and 60 yards of offense last week against Lindmar. Uh, Washington obviously has struggled defensively, but seemed to get a, a little bit of an offense going. Uh, Henry Clymer threw for 184, and Warriors ran for over 100 yards. So, with all the injury question marks and, and, and things like that, uh, I'm going to be the odd duck, as usual, and uh, and take the Warriors here. So, we'll uh, we'll find out. That'll be at Kingston Stadium tomorrow night, uh, the old Wash Jeff battle. One more here in 4A before we turn to the lower classes. We have Dubuque Senior 2-1 and one at Iowa City West 0-3. Oh, Senior, as we mentioned, beat Washington last week 28-7, to and West dropped a tight... 23-21 game to 10th ranked Southeast Polk last week. Um, West still looking for its first win. Marcus Morgan continues to throw the heck out of the football, uh, and that is exactly what the what uh, what the Trojans have going for them right now. Um, what do we think, guys? Where are you going? Where are you going? I, I'm going West. I think they get their first win. Seniors is a, a quality team. Uh, not a great team, not a bad team, but uh, a pretty decent team. But I think uh, I think West is a lot better than than zero and three. Seniors beaten down Port North and Washington last week and lost a tight game to to Linmar. Um, by the way, just for everybody's information out there, KJ, what do you got? Marcus Morgan, as you mentioned, is thrown for seven hundred and nineteen yards, including three forty eight against Southeast Polk, uh, three TDs. 
Uh, Graham Goring uh, leads the way with 16 catches for 291 yards and two touchdowns. That seems to be what uh, what hurts Senior the most. They've given up almost 700 yards of passing through the first three weeks, including about 250 in the first two weeks, and 184 to Washington, which is a is a large amount of, uh, for the Warriors to, to get uh, so far with that team. Um, going with uh, Iowa City West. I am as well, and congrats to Graham Goring, who set a West school record with 13 catches last week, wow. which is one more than uh, Iowa sophomore Oliver Martin had in a game uh, his senior year. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, elite I like... Elite company. Yes, very elite company. I, too, am going with West, especially at home. Though, again, it should be a very uh, very fine football game. All right, let's turn to the biggie in Class 3A, boys. Uh, third rank North Scott, 3-0. and At top rank Western Dubuque, 3-0. and North Scott uh, beat back... Uh, rival Pleasant Valley last week, twenty to nothing. Western Dubuque beat Decorah twenty three to two. This is a big one, and uh, who do we think is gonna gonna come out ahead here? KJ, you you think you've uh, uh, you've heard some news? So we'll yeah, you kind of heard some rumblings from uh, from the area that North Scott might be a little beat up. They might have uh, uh, one of their marquee linemen. Uh, hurt, uh, might be hurt for an extended period of time. Um, I think this is a game where where either team uh, needs to be 100% healthy uh, to come away with a win. You know, we, we talk a lot about the, the Western Dubuque uh, offense and Calvin Harris and what they've been able to do. Uh, their defense has only given up 22 points through the first three weeks and held and actually it's only 20 because uh, the two points to Cora score came from a safety um, so I think that's uh, that's what Western Dubuque needs to uh, to continue this week their defense needs to play lights out uh, they're gonna score uh, a few points with Harris and the group on offense uh, but uh, defensively I think this is where Western Dubuque uh, wins the game and Parker my man uh, likes the Bobcats Lindy I like the Bobcats too uh, both teams play really good defense both of them about seven points a game I think Western Dubuque might be just a little bit more explosive and uh, that's why I'm gonna lean that way I am as well um, Gosh, I just think maybe the first team to 20, if somebody gets 20 wins this game. When you look 17? At, when you look at the defense of, uh, of both teams and what they've been able to do so far. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, you can't dismiss the wins that North Scott has had. You know, to beat two 4A teams in, in Iowa City West and, and Downport Central and actually three 4A teams in Pleasant Valley as well. So, uh, actually playing down a class this week. But uh, yeah, I at home I like Western Dubuque here. But again, this should be uh, this should be a, a heck of a football game, no question. Two Solon for our next game, Johnson County Davenport Assumption one and two at the fifth ranked Solon Spartans three and zero. Oh. Assumption lost to top or to number two Cedar Rapids Xavier last <coughs> week, seventeen to nothing. While Solon shut out Marion forty four to nothing. Lindy, you saw. Assumption last week, so we're gonna kick it to you here for the um, first bit. Held held Xavier to seventeen points, and uh, that's worth something. Um, uh, you know, I think they they could have played till Sunday and they wouldn't have scored on Xavier. <laughs> but um, did you uh, mean that on purpose? With both being Catholic no, schools to play no, Saturday, because that was funny. Okay. I didn't even, I thought Saturday, was, Saturday, that was, Saturday. Then it was a Thursday no, game. They could play till Saturday. I thought it was funny. <laughs> I didn't mean it to be funny. Um, Sorry, that's okay. Um, so I, I'm picking Solon. Uh, I think they've uh, they've been really um, good on both sides of the ball, and uh, I do think this is probably the best team that uh, Solon's played so far. But I think it's uh, I think it's not it's another W. I'm looking forward to that game in uh, what three weeks at Washington, Iowa. Solon, mm-hmm. Solon wise, but uh, yeah, uh, I just think the Spartans have a little too much uh, firepower here, um, and 
and uh, we've all we all know the names for for Solon to look out for here with um, Coons and uh, uh, Miller and, and and guys like that. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm going with as well. I think Solon just has a little bit too much firepower offensively. Uh, so we all agree. Now let's head down. Back. Did you pick Solon? I picked Solon. Okay. Did you pick Solon? Um, I'm Parker sorry. and I did. Uh, that's all right. I can give my pick on Sunday. <laughs> no, go go right ahead. Sorry, Parker. No, sorry, man. I, no. Uh, Parker uh, Parker likes his, the Spartans. The only thing that I'll add is that uh, I think you agree that maybe Assumptions had the tougher schedule so far, but Solon has routed the teams that they've played. They've taken care of business so far and. See that? Like their balance attack, uh, their off, their passing and, and rushing production are, are just about equal. So. All right, well. KJ, you're up here first. <laughs> Marion zero and three at Clear Creek Command at two and one. Marion lost to Solon as we just mentioned, forty four to nothing last week. CCA with a thirty five to thirteen win at Fort Madison. Go. Uh, I'm going to steal a line from Tom Brands and the the fact that it's always easier. To move forward with success, um, Clear Creek's had a little bit more success so far this season. Um, you know, kind of after uh, stubbing their toe against Mount Pleasant in Week One, and uh, Marion's kind of uh, kind of in limbo right now. They've uh, they're still trying to find themselves. So, Parker and I have Clear Creek Commando. Jeff, I I do as well, as do you. Mm -hmm. Um, Parker and you and me and you too. Uh, Fairfield and Fort Madison are the teams at Clear Creek. Mm -hmm. Amanda has beaten them both on the road, so looking for the first home win of the year. Marion's just struggling a little bit. Looks like on both sides of the football. and uh, Yeah, not much offense again last week. 16 yards passing, about 50 yards rushing. So... um, Kind of tough for the Indians right now. I think Clear Creek commands just a little bit too much. Would you agree? Would you agree with that? I do. I do. Let's, let's go down to uh, Class One A for our next game. We're going to stay in Johnson County. <coughs> a lot of football in Johnson County tomorrow night. We have Williamsburg one and two out of Iowa City Regina two and one. Williamsburg played uh, Class One A number three West Branch tough last week before falling thirty nine thirty three. Regina with a win over Pella Christian forty five to thirteen. Um, guys, Regina lost obviously that first game to Xavier, but I think we're starting to find out that Xavier's a really good football team mm-hmm. again. So maybe brush that one aside, and uh, I think Williamsburg's got a pretty good football team again here too, playing that gauntlet of a schedule. Mm-hmm. So uh, who wants to start? Go ahead. Um, I I think a lot of people, as weird as it might sound, I think a lot of people are sleeping on Regina. After last year, not realizing kind of how banged up they were and kind of looking at the uh, the fact that they didn't make the playoffs and then they start with a shutout loss to, to Xavier, as you mentioned, turned out to be really good. But they've scored 101 points over the last two weeks, really seeing uh, Ashton Cook uh, come into his own, I think, 288 yards passing uh, against Anamosa. And then uh, 250 yards passing uh, against Pella Christian and seven TDs out of that stretch. So um, I I think Regina has kind of regained its uh, its potency uh, on offense and uh, defense. You know uh, they they've been decent the last two weeks and seem to be getting better. So uh, I like Regina here. Alec Wick had uh, seven catches for 227 and three touchdowns. Who So if you didn't have him in your starting fantasy football, shame <laughs> on you last week. Uh, Jeff, we, we just talked we, we talked about, uh, uh, I feel sorry for Kurt Ritchie and the schedule that he has to play, but you know what? He's the AD, so he put it together yeah. himself. Uh, West Marshall, Western Dubuque, and Regina, three of the first four on the road, the only home game I, uh, West Branch. That's tough. Mm-hmm. And it's going to pay off come district time. I still think they're a pretty solid pick to win that district, even if they go in, even if they do get beaten, go in at one and three. Um, 
Uh, most of the attack that they got against West Branch was on, in special teams. They mm-hmm. scored two touchdowns on kickoff returns. Um, when all is said and done after next year, I would think Cook and Wick will have a lot of records in that Regina record book in that passing, that, that uh, pass-catch combo. Um, I, I think Regina's, you know, starting to build some momentum, and I'm, I'm going to go that direction as well. And I am as well. Uh, I'll just echo everything that these guys said. So uh, we all pick Regina here to, uh, to beat Williamsburg. Two more games left, and one of them is in Class A, where we have third-ranked Edgewood Colesburg at North Lynn. Both teams are 3-0. Edco with an impressive 41-8 win last week over East Buchanan. North Lynn doubled up its Lynn County rival, Albert, at 28-14. Um, so far, so good for, for Edco. Uh, right, guys, as it uh, you know tries to build off uh, what was a very special season last season. Yeah, um, and uh, they they're both playing really well defensively, and uh, I think uh, I think it's going to be a uh, slugfest up there. You're going to be up there for for other reasons, and and also to cover the game. But uh, I, you know, this might be first one to fourteen, <laughs> um, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go Edco. KJ. Yeah, you know the. Two teams have combined for three shutouts so far. Uh, 29 points total they, they've allowed. Uh, it might even be less than 14 for team. For team to six. To double digits, yeah. Um, whoever converts the extra point might be uh, uh, might end up the winner. And I think that's how I'd put one last year. I think uh, their defense really came through against North Lynn as well. Um this pick comes with a little bit of a side message. Jared Collin, the coach at North Lynn, Parker Leibel loves you. You're one of his favorite people. However, he wants you to know this is business. <laughs> that was his message. This is business, uh, not friendness. He's picking Edco. So Parker just wanted to let you know it's nothing personal. I'm going by the old uh, compare the scores here. Starmont it was the uh, opponent that both teams have, have played. Uh, Ed Coe beat them forty to nothing. North Lane beat them fifty three nothing. Therefore, North Lane is going to win the football game. And uh, as Jeff mentioned, I'll be up there to officially award our two thousand nineteen uh, Gazette Male Athlete of the Year award uh, honor to uh, Jay Kimmer, freshman uh, now at Upper Iowa University. So. One more game, we go to eight player. Uh, it, again, and a good one here. Uh, third ranked Turkey Valley at Springville. Turkey Valley's 3 0, Springville 4 0. Turkey Valley with an impressive 52 6 win over Midland last week, and uh, Springville survived the very long bus ride up to Lansing Key, which is uh, what? Darn, darn near Minnesota, right? And darn near Wisconsin. And darn near Wisconsin. 36 14, Springville wins that. Um, now Turkey Valley has to make a long, long ride, <laughs> ride down to Lynn County. What do, what do you, uh, what are we thinking here, guys? Ah, uh, I think Turkey Valley might be just a little bit better on both sides of the ball. Uh, Turkey Valley is really dominant, outscoring their opponents fifty-two to eight. Uh, Springville's very good, very good, um, but I think Turkey Valley might be one more very, very, very good. And uh, with that, I'm going to go with the Trojans. Yeah, you look at uh, uh, Turkey. Turkey Valley hasn't played a close game. Fifty-six six over uh, Ag Agweiser, as Jeff calls them. Forty-eight <laughs> fourteen over uh, Gladbrook Rheinbeck, and then you know just a, a terrific performance last week. Fifty-two to six over um, over Midland. So uh, this was you know this was a team that was good last year. They had most everybody back. So I think everyone knew that uh, the Trojans were going to be. Really, really good. Uh, I've seen Springville has a lot of nice uh, variables to to its offense, and uh, not the biggest team in the world. And that's always the thing I think that uh, that uh, you know Coach Martin worries about is uh, how how are you know how is his team going to handle size and, and things of that nature. So uh, I don't know all this uh, all this going into the com- little computer up here. I'm picking Turkey Valley as well, Bill G. This is going to seem uh, a little 
uh, goofy with what I point out and then what I what Parker and I picked. Uh, but defensively, Springville has forced twelve turnovers so far, and that's uh, huge. Uh, that's that's big, and it's something that they're going they're going to have to do Friday against Turkey Valley. The other thing on special teams, they've returned two kickoffs for for scores uh, this year as well. Uh, sometimes in close games, defensive, uh, you know, the turnovers and special teams play could make the difference. If Springville wants to improve to 5-0, and that's what they're going to need to have happen. Uh, but we're going with Turkey Valley as well in, in a close game. Friday night lights, everybody. Hit the gazette.com for uh, updated rolling scoreboard. Uh, and, of course, then after the games are over, we've got a lot of guys out covering uh, contests again. So we'll have a lot of game stories, stats, all that fun stuff. At JT Linder, Jeff, where are you going to be tomorrow night? John Wallfield. Kennedy Prayer. Perry and Kennedy. At KJ Pilcher. I, will, I am heading to the land of the Orioles. Uh, I'll have Turkey Valley and Springville in uh, my second eight-player contest of the year. Best popcorn I've had this season, by the way, just so you know. Ollie, uh, you know what? Maybe I'll, get, maybe I'll get some and bring it home to Katie, my younger Here's daughter. Here's a dollar on me, on me tomorrow night because the popcorn is so good at Springville. Get one. Uh, I at JEJ66 mentioned we will be at uh, uh, Northland for the Northland Edco game. Got uh, a lot of things to, to cover tomorrow night, week four. Uh, we're almost halfway done with this sucker uh, in the regular season. It's going fast. Uh, I think the weather, I don't know, I haven't seen a forecast, but my trick needs tells think me more I think rain. we're going uh, to be rained on maybe a little bit, but hopefully no lightning. That's a big thing. So thanks for joining us for uh, week four edition of Iowa Prep Sports Pickums, Parker. Gosh darn it, if you go ten and all, Jeff, Jeff and I are—it's <laughs> just going to be you and <coughs> you and KJ on the podcast next week. So thanks to Nathan Ford, our producer, and we will talk at you next week. Take care.